So uh, we're going to get started uh, doing uh, the next layer of paint. Um, so we were working in pure paint. Uh, we were working a little bit choppy, so you can see the difference between the value steps. Um, that's a really good way to construct the face. The brush strokes are more obvious. Um, the planes of the sort of um, the tones and things. I'm really concentrating on the structure. And today will mostly be about refining and uh, finishing. So there's there's a couple approaches, of course. Um, I'm going to jump into a kind of glaze layer where it's at least semi-transparent, the layer of paint. We will be working, a, like I said, a semi-transparent way where you can see this layer, but you can also see a little bit of what's going on below. So on the bottom part of my palette here, down here, you can see just at the bottom of the video, that is where I have this stuff called uh, the walnut oil gel. And so this is for oil painters. If I was uh, doing my acrylic painting, I would use this stuff. Oops, this stuff. Glass, medium, and varnish. And you can see even in the video, it's got this thick uh, kind of milky quality to it. And that suspends the pigment of the paint in a really nice way. So it's the same with my oily stuff here. You can see, I think, on my brush, it, it holds its body quite nicely, it's, uh, it's oil and um, I think silicone. So it's got um, some nice body to it. Okay, so now we get into the more uh, the interesting part about trying to decide uh, how transparent we want the paint and how to start to blend some of these edges. Uh, so, and your, your painting should be completely dry at this point too. So mine's been drying for the whole week. And so I'm going to add, and I'll, I'll demo it uh, maybe right down here so you can see it a bit better. Um, so I have the paint on my brush. I have a little bit of the oil and you can start to see that as more of the paint gets in there, it's a little bit opaque, but you can actually see the palette below. You can see how thin that paint is. So you can imagine when you put it down, you are gonna be able to see through that layer of paint at least a little bit. So this layer of paint is gonna be interacting with the layer below. If we want it to interact even more, we could add just a little bit more of the gel and get even more transparent. So maybe I'll push it to an extreme here where we get very transparent down here. And you can, you know, it's almost half and half now. We're seeing half of the paint and half of the palette underneath. And so that's, you can test it right on your palette here to see what you're gonna see. And so the idea is that, the, you know, when you add the medium, the, the pigment is more spread out uh, in an area like this. So, you know, some of those photons of light are gonna be hitting this layer of paint. And when I put on that next layer of paint, um, it's also going to be hitting some of the that sort of glaze layer. And so you get to decide how transparent you want to be in the end too. It doesn't have to be all exceptionally transparent. Uh, it could be a range of relatively opaque where maybe an area like this line, I need to be a bit more opaque because I need to have a bit more coverage and uh, really decide what's happening with that edge a bit more. Uh, but down here where the, the values are very subtle already, there's little transitional areas that are, are showing through. I can be probably a little bit more transparent with those. So whether you're working in a glazed sort of uh, medium or you're working in pure paint, I'm going to be much more cognizant about how I want to finish the portrait. So oftentimes in my portraits, I don't mind if there's a brush stroke here or there showing. I can design it a little bit as I go. Um, but this is the time to really decide uh, about the finish that you want for it. You can do the same thing if you're jumping in with pure paint. I don't know if I said this. You can jump in and just uh, paint it and blend it and finish it off that way. That's totally fine. Uh, so I can go back with my other brush, kind of push it down just to make sure I have that nice transition of values. 
So in, in again with my lighter brush, I'm going to surround this uh, light just a little bit more. I'm also really focusing on exactly where I see the end of some of these halftone shapes. So right up to the edge of the highlight, it is a little bit darker just because that should be the edge of the orbital. And then it does dip into the cheek. So it might go a little bit darker there. So I'll darken my tone just a little bit. I still want to go a little bit pinker. She just, she just seems a bit pinker to me. As I work down that way. I also notice that the highlight does come down in that direction here. So the half tone of the cheek, uh, which I could actually just do this brush. It should come down kind of in that direction. There will be a very specific transition there, which I can get to, uh, but I'm not, I don't have that brush ready to go yet. Again, I'm, I'm wanting to go a little bit cooler. My paint is still relatively thin, but when I need to, and I want it a little bit thinner, I can always add a little bit more oil to it. With this highlight, I can start to bring down. I know I'm also paying attention to the value of this part of the highlight versus the part of the highlight on the cheekbone. And it does get a little bit darker as it goes down the front of the face here. And it does get a little bit lighter as we travel in this way. So I'm just going to mush into that color a little bit more. If we jump back into our lighter shadow here, I think let's just try and jump into this reddish mixture and lighten it up a bit. Um, so with acrylics, I would be adding the components of that reddish mixture into my little pile. Uh, but of course, because it's oil, it's, I can just jump right in. Uh, so that's a bit dark. Maybe what I'll do is I'll mix one more transition in between these two. So I have my darker brush now. This is my third brush. You can start to see the values much better uh, with my brushes here. We have the very light on the left, a little darker, a little darker, and then shadow on the right. And so I'm using my third dark value. I'm going to add the alizarin crimson is doing a lot for me right now, so I'm, I'm going to continue to dip into it. And as we're coming out of the shadows, that's, that's too warm. So I'm going to cool it down with, again, a little bit of, that's too much probably, but a little bit of uh, uh, ultramarine blue and then a little bit of uh, iridium. Bringing that color down a little bit, I'll probably have to go in again with my mid brush, just push back into it a little bit. I also know that this color in here, so it kind of looks like there's a highlight down here, but it's probably not going to be too, too light. So if we look at the highlight down here, it's probably going to be somewhere in this value range. So if I start to put in a little bit of that color, it should probably fit. Although that color is too red, I think it's going to go a little bit more purpley. push out this kind of great purpley color into the, the cheek a little bit that way. Uh, and so you can see if you look, I'll bring you up close, you can see that it's uh, looking more blended. The edges of those uh, half tones that were around the cheek have been changed a little bit. Uh, they've gotten softer already, but I do want to, I'll try and blend it even a little bit more, make sure I get rid of I have this weird sharp angle right there. Oops, sorry, I'm pointing up right there. I want to make sure I deal with the transition from the highlight to the half tone beside it. And then maybe I'll make my way up to the bottom of the eye tune and try and do a bit of that. Mm -hmm.